Unit 20, blood pressure. So again, another one of your measurement skills tested by Pearson and View, and we'll practice in class and skills lab. So um, the blood pressure is the fourth vital sign. So again, remember the vital signs are kind of a, a, an easy way for us in the healthcare field to sort of get a baseline measurement of how folks are doing. So um, you know, all the vital signs will be taken on admission, they'll be taken before discharge, and then they'll be, ta they'll be taken routinely. So it'll vary depending on the facility you work in. So if you're in an acute setting, a hospital setting, you'll be likely taking them every four hours. Uh, depending, you know, post-surgically, you'll be taking them more frequently. Uh, Long-term care, you'll be probably taking them less frequently. So just finding out uh, what the institution sets forth for how, how often you take vital signs is important. But so for blood pressure, the fourth vital sign and it's the measure of force of blood against the wall of arteries. So two items are required for taking a blood pressure. So you need a sphygma manometer, so also referred to as blood pressure cuff because it's much, much easier to say. Um, and then you also need a stethoscope. So you need two items um, necessary for taking a, a manual blood pressure. So measuring your blood pressure. So it's usually done in the upper arm over the brachial artery. So you'll see this is, uh, if you've had your blood pressure taken before, the, the really standard spot for where blood pressure is taken. So again, you're going to be listening with the stethoscope over the brachial artery. So the readings can be taken anywhere else, but it does require the nurse's permission to do so. So um, some facilities prefer using the left arm, and really this is because it's closest to the heart. But you'll find there's also contraindications to doing blood pressure on an arm. So if someone's on dialysis and they have a shunt in that arm, you're not going to do the blood pressure there. Um, if someone's had a mastectomy, there's a, there's a variety of reasons why they wouldn't be testing on that arm. So there should be a sign um, in the patient's room saying no blood pressure taken on such and such arm, but make sure that you're very, very mindful if you know of a patient that's, that's on dialysis that you're, you're being aware of not, try, of not taking the blood pressure in that arm. Uh, and then also you're not going to want to be taking the blood pressure in the same arm as you're doing a pulse ox reading. So when you are in um, an acute care setting, you're often, or even long-term care, you're using um, the electronic uh, blood pressure cuffs, you're using pulse oxes, and often you're taking multiple vital signs sort of simultaneously. Just making sure if you're taking the blood pressure on the left arm, you're doing the pulse ox on the right arm, because what will happen is you're going to skew the results of that pulse ox by um, inflating that blood pressure cuff on that arm. So obtaining an accurate value, so it's very, very, very important, especially with blood pressure, that we're getting accurate values. So um, hypertension, so elevated, remember hyper with our med terms means elevated. Um, elevated blood pressure can have all kinds of impacts on the body system. So increased risk for strokes, you know, cardi cardiovascular problems. So it's very important if somebody has hypertension that they are um, treated for it, they're taking blood pressure medications, they're, you know, doing diet restrictions, whatever their doctor has recommended for them in their situation. So our job um, in the nursing field is, and your job as a CNA is to make sure when you're doing these measurements, you're getting a really accurate result. So um, starting with making sure that the needle is on zero before inflating the cuff on the sphygma manometer. So making sure it starts out at zero. So similarly, when we do um, ambulatory weight, you're always going to zero things out before you begin to make sure that the, your measurement's accurate. So what happens if it's not on zero, it means that the, the, the cuff is slightly inflated. So it's not going to give you an accurate measurement. Or if you're using a mercury gauge, making sure that it's upright and not tilted because that's, it's, that will skew your results. So an accurate value, so if you look at both of these different um, schematics here. So this is the two different ways you're going to be viewing blood pressure. So the ones we use in class are going to look like the, the schematic on the left, um, but you may be using some that look like them on the right. So it just depends on what kind of um, you know, cuff your, your facility is using. So, but it's important to know and to, to really look at these um, guides as you're using them before you start. So as you look here, so on the far right and on the far left, they're, they're doing right around 80. So you see that these are in increments of two. So one line on that left-hand side above 80 is going to be 82. 
whereas one line below it's going to be 78. So it's important that you know this, and this is just going to take practice with, you know, being able to quickly read these numbers. But they're in increments of 2, so 2, you know, 82, 84, 86, 88, and then 90. So being aware of that, the, in, the um, increments of 2. So normal blood pressure values by age, you're also given these values in your um, your policy manual, your big nurse aid practice uh, manual. Uh, and what's really important, so depending on the age group you're working in, so if you're working in pediatrics, it's very important as you're working with different age groups that you know what's a normal blood pressure value by age. So again, what's going to be appropriate for two to six months is not going to be what's appropriate for a 55-year-old person. So making sure that you understand what's a normal range for that um, age bracket. So for our for our intents and purposes, we're working on each other, we're working on adults, and so over 18 years down here at the bottom. So the systolic is going to be 120, so the systolic is that top number, over the diastolic, which is 80. So this is going to be what we're looking for for normal blood pressure values for an adult. Um, so blood pressure categories, so we're very, very mindful in, in healthcare about any elevation in blood pressure outside the normal range. So again, you have normal as that 120 systolic and that 80 diastolic. And again, the blood pressure, it's, it's measured in um, millimeters of mercury, so you'll see that blood pressure level at the top. That's talking about millimeters of mercury, which is just a pressure reading. So prehypertension is between a systolic between 120 to 139. So again, this is prehypertension. So not officially hypertension yet, but but we're going to be watching it. We're going to be mindful of this and and kind of monitoring this patient. And then again, a diastolic of 80 to 89. So this is prehypertension. Um, and really, what's what it's going to take, especially in the healthcare setting. There's different facilities have different guidelines, but generally it's it's three um, high readings in a row. So sometimes people People get very, very nervous when you're taking their blood pressure, and so there's a false positive, essentially, a, an elevation just related to them being nervous and anxious about the test. And so really having three high measurements is going to be indicative of, okay, this is uh, stage one hypertension uh, or stage two hypertension. So, um, so down at the bottom, so high blood pressure, so hypertension, stage one is going to be a systolic between 140 to 159 or a diastolic between 90 to 90. And then a stage 2 hypertension, so above that 159 mark for systolic, so anything above 160 or anything above a diastolic of 100. So one other important thing to remember is sometimes people will have an elevated systolic, but their diastolic will still be normal. So the example here, so a 160, which is a stage 2 hypertension, whereas an 80, where that's considered a normal range. We're still going to classify them as a stage 2 hypertension because you're always going to go with the higher category. So if they're not both high, you're going to go with the one that is a higher category. And again, what this is is, is, is making sure that this person's followed up with, that we are aware of of, um, you know, the issues that this may cause the cardiovascular system, the increased risk for stroke. So again, it's just being mindful that this is an issue, not both numbers out of whack, but we're still going to consider this person a stage 2 hypertension. And we'll discuss more of this when we get into class and practice.